Hello again for a quick little bit of Sunday swatching. When I first got these lovely deep, deep light watercolours, I had a little play in my watercolour swatching sketchbook. This is just a, a very cheap old um, sketchbook I got years ago, probably maybe even before I started all this crafting and arting. And I just had a little play with the colours that I'd chosen. I chose these specifically with my botanical stamps in mind, the stamps I've designed for Paper Artsy. And uh, so I wanted lots of fruity, berry kind of colours, as well as a nice way to create lots of greens with my yellows and blues, as well as a couple of these irresistible greens down here. And that was the first little play I had, also mixing some colours just completely randomly <laughs> on the facing page to see what kinds of mixes I could get. But I haven't yet put in a proper little swatch card into the tin, which has meant that on a couple of occasions I've I've thought I was going for river and ended up with cedar teal. I've thought I was going for mother earth and I've ended up with forest pigeon. Amazing names, by the way, on these deep, deep light watercolors. So I thought it was about time I created my little swatch card. So I measured out the card that's going to fit in there, divided up my blocks so that it fits the 15 colours I've got. And I've also, in teeny tiny writing, popped in the names just as a little reminder. I haven't got the full names on some of them, just because that I will, once they're here, I will remember. And then it's just going to be a question of getting these down onto the card. So a little spritz of water to just wake them up, but I will also dip and play in here. And what I usually do when I'm swatching is it's incredibly straightforward, um, but it'll just give you a chance to see these paints coming to life onto the paper. I tend to keep lots of pigment at the top. It's slightly wet because I got overexcited with my water. And then if need be, drop a little bit more pigment into the top and just let it drift down. Sometimes I'll go over the writing as well because that's a lovely test of opacity. But I think in this case, I'm going to just let the words stay nice and clear. Partly because I know peach blossom is quite opaque and I'll lose that. And then quite often what I'll do so the colours don't run into each other is rather than going immediately next door, I'll take myself one square over and put in next the Mirabelle Plum, which is a beautiful, rich, golden, yellow. Little hints of orange in there as well, that plum flesh once you bite through the skin. And that, let that just drift down. So that in each square, I'm getting a little look at a highly pigmented place and then something with a little more blend. Just off at the side here, I'm just drying my brush a bit on some paper towel. That's all that's happening there. And then I'll head into, I might go to the one in the middle here, which means that I'm going next with the Mayan Red, which is a really amazing paint in terms of the variation you can get from the highly pigmented tone down to an almost barely there pink, which is really beautiful when you add water. So I'm just going to draw that down. And it's such a pretty colour. I sort of, I suppose I sort of had roses in mind for that. So here's a great example of what happens when you head into a square you didn't mean to go to. Get in there straight away, pick up what you can, and then a little bit of water will probably do the rest. And that's another good reason. So I'm just taking back the water. The water will allow me to pick up the pigment, and then I'll just dry that so that it doesn't spread into that square. But that's another good reason for alternating where you're taking the paints so that that square will have some time to dry before I come back to put the wild berry into it. And you can see I'm just dropping in a little bit more pigment across the top here so that I can really see the fully pigmented paint there. 
So if we're alternating, I'm going to be coming down to Brambleberry next. Uh, so lots of these come from a set they call the jam set. I didn't quite get the whole jam set. I'm sort of wishing now I had because there was a wonderful um, gooseberry in it, I think, uh, which was actually quite a fabulous colour. So that's the brambleberry, which has got a lovely blue tone to it. I'll spread it down a bit. I might switch to a slightly smaller brush because I seem to be going over the lines quite a lot today. The next square is going to be blueberry, so that's going to be quite a similar tone. So it won't matter hugely. But you can see again, these are beautifully pigmented paints so that even when you've got a really watery mix, you're getting a beautiful shade or tone of the colour. And again, just dropping in a bit more pigment at the top so that I can see what that really is. And I really, I quite like, because I, I work with layers and I work with texture a lot when I'm painting, I don't need a beautiful flat wash for this. I really am working to see what the paint is like when you drop it in on itself. I'm not trying to create a completely flat wash with these. So over to the J blue on this side. Oh, look at the pigment on that. So that I'm really going to have to clean the brush quite substantially in order to be able to pull any pigment down from there. Amazing depth of colour. Uh, but as I pull it down, you can see that lovely sort of greyish tone it's got. And you know me in grey. That's one of my favourite things to have. So I'll let that cook or move. And coming to the middle here, we're heading for cedar teal. This one on my wish lists was, was pretty much always uh, in, the, in the mix. However, I changed my short list. I was playing. I said I was going to change brushes, didn't I? And I haven't. And it requires me to focus a little bit. Let's clean that off and just with a slightly damp brush, draw down some of that pigment and you can see why I enjoyed that. That grey green, perfect for botanical shadows and that sort of sense of maybe even a cloudy day. And again, I'm not going for the flat wash. I just want to let the pigment play on the paper a little bit so that I can see what's what's available to me. Down in this corner I've got the dragonfly blue which again was was always pretty much on the short on the various short lists when I was trying to decide what to get. Because what I wanted to do with this I quite often when I'm buying paints I I buy not very practical palettes because I just go for colours that make my heart sing and what I really wanted to do when I was buying these was get myself a mixing palette that would work really well plus a couple of favourites. So a mixing palette with some decent yellows and reds and blues in so that I've got some primaries. Um, but then to have a couple of favourites alongside so a pre-mixed green is pretty much always a must for me and this solstice fern is amazing proper kind of fir tree, spring fern, somewhere between those two things. So it, it does winter, it does summer, it does autumn. As a green, it's fabulous. But I've also got some yellows and blues that I can mix up other greens with or add to the solstice fern. And then a favourite like a turquoise, which, you know, it's nice to have a pre-mixed turquoise. So that's the sort of, that's the halfway stage. With those colours in, I'm just thinking I might drop a little bit more Mayan red into the top of here. So this is another thing I'll quite often do, is go back and add a little more pigment. And again, that's not fully dry, so it's not really like a second layer or a glaze. It's it's playing with the pigment. It's letting the pigment play. So back up to this top row, let's go and get the cloudberry. And this is this is was quite an unusual choice for me. I'm I'm not much for yellow in the general way of things. So having two yellows was was interesting, but this one just had such a sort of buttery quality to it that was really interesting to me. It's almost a it's almost a beige when it when it gets a bit more water to it. So that that was one I was curious about. 
rose hip, given I've actually got some rose hip stamps. I've got a, a set of botanical stamps with rose hip sketches. Rose hip was pretty much a given, and that with the Mayan red is really a, a spectacular mixer up for berries and things. And again, has a beautiful way of just blending out into a very soft peachy orange. Really pretty. Over here, I've got the Wildberry Jam, which is much more of a sort of damson colour. So the Brambleberry has that beautiful blue tone, whereas the Wildberry really is, is in the world of maroon. Again, blends out beautifully. And you can see, you can see here how those jam colours were really, it was really all about the berry. And along with brambleberry, we've got blueberry, which just sort of bridges that gap um, between the brambleberry and the jay blue with a sort of real grey mauve. Drawing out the pigment a little. And over here, forest pigeon. So this was this was a slight indulgence because it's it's a grey blue. Really, I should probably have gone for a, a more full on blue in terms of a mixing palette. But the forest pigeon just appealed to me again. You know me in grey. That's that's where my palettes tend to be at their happiest. So I thought, why not get myself a nice grey blue? And this forest pigeon is really quite special. I don't think I've got anything quite like it in any of my other paint palettes. It's a, it's got a lovely softness to it. That's that one. On to Mother Earth. So here's this one's a full on grey. Oh, that got quite a lot of the spritz of water early on. So that's got nicely juicy. Again, I'm going to have to clean off the brush quite a lot because there's a lot going on already in that square. So I'm going to draw it down. That's a that's a really solid mid grey. Perfect for shadowing, perfect for darkening up any other colours. And as you can see, again, a lot of pigment to play with. And it does do things really nicely. While I'm here, I'm thinking I really want a bit more cedar teal into the top of there. Why not, since we're here? Yeah, that's nice. And again, a bit more from the river down here. So this was another sort of, I guess, a, a greeny turquoise. Wow, and again, look at the pigment on that because it's had the water sitting on it. It's got lots to play with. And it really is, again, a beautiful, darkly pigmented colour that, because it's so highly pigmented, spreads out really deliciously. And I think maybe another reason I'm drawn to these paints is they're, they've got, uh, I'm going to say it, a European feel to them because they're, they're made in Northern Europe, in Latvia, and they draw on the colours of the landscape around them. They use uh, grasses and berries and elements from nature, so they do have a sort of real connection, I suppose, to the botanical set sketches that I like to do here in here in Central Europe. So let me give you a slightly closer look. Still drying, you can see the glint of the water there. But that's the little set that I got myself of the deep, deep light handmade watercolour paints. And as I say, I had lots of fun just seeing what kinds of mixes I could get. And my next task is going to be to do a sort of official mixing grid. That's my plan probably for the next Sunday swatching. But I hope you've enjoyed just watching that meditative practice. Maybe you've switched off my voice and just listened to some lovely music while it all happened. 
and uh, I hope you all have a lovely rest of Sunday.